Microsoft Surface Go, the review. Let's get into it. What's up YouTube, Mike here with another video and today I wanted to talk about the Microsoft Surface Duo. And of course, right off the bat, I've got to get into the hardware. So let's do it. So like every reviewer out there, I definitely love the hardware, especially this friction hinge. I mean, it is a design marvel. Microsoft really knocked it out of the park with the physical design of this thing, especially this hinge. I mean, everybody jokes that Microsoft is a hinge company that also happens to make software, and I kind of agree with it after this product. So as you can see, this thing is covered in glass on the front, the back, and of course, the actual display. So this thing is a fingerprint magnet all around, so I would highly recommend you get a skin for the outside and some sort of screen protector for the inside. I personally prefer matte, so I would go with the sc matte screen protector. As you can see, the screen also is highly reflective, so that's why I would put a screen protector, preferably a matte one, because then it's going to kind of help with the reflectivity and also minimize the fingerprints. But I think with the physical design of this thing, Microsoft hit a home run with this. I mean, they knocked it out of the park. Every review, um, no matter how negative, are all going to be positive on the actual build quality of this thing. I mean, it's literally a engineering marvel how thin this thing is. It's literally about the same thickness of, you know, a, a flagship phone today, maybe a hair thicker, and that's with two separate displays. As I said, every reviewer can most likely agree on the spectacular hardware of this. The thing that most folks kind of don't care about or agree with are the specs. So let's get into the specs of this. So as I already mentioned, this thing has two um, glass 5.6 inch displays. As you can see, they are Gorilla Glass and it's also Gorilla Glass on the back. As you can see, they are both extremely bright and vibrant. However, they do not have a 120 hertz or 90 hertz refresh rate. It's only 60 hertz, but Honestly, I could give a crap about that. It doesn't mean anything to me, um, but you may be different. So on the inside of this thing, it has a Snapdragon 855 processor and six gigabytes of RAM. You can get this in either 128 gigabytes of storage or 256 gigabytes. Now, a lot of people hate on the processor of this thing because it's from last year, but personally, I don't see it as an issue. Didn't have any issues with that. Uh, however, the six gigabytes of RAM can definitely be noticeable. But as far as the processor, don't let that scare you. I mean, I've got an S10e that I'll run DeX with on an external monitor. It's only got the Snapdragon 855 and it crushes everything I throw at it. So don't let the processor scare you. However, I do think the RAM is an issue and it should be increased in the next model. Now the whole device is powered by a 3,577 milliamp battery, which does not sound very big because it's not, um, it does not support wireless charging either, so it's wired only, and this also does not have NFC, but I'll get into all those issues here in a minute. This also has Bluetooth 5.0 and of course 4G LTE, no 5G with this, and that goes along with the processor, battery life, and how thin this thing is. But to be honest with you, 5G, not a big deal this year, Maybe next year in the next, obviously it's gonna become more of an issue for devices. This also has a fingerprint sensor built in on the side and I will say that it's fast, accurate. I haven't had any issues with the fingerprint sensor on this thing. It's been a 100% of the time, all the time, so no issues there. However, it would have been nice to see face unlock, especially with these giant top bezels. It would have been nice if uh, they put some sort of IR camera in here, maybe the next gen. Now, as you can see, this only comes in one color variant to date. So again, you can fix that with the skin. Also, the bumper that comes in the box is only one color. However, coming up next week or the week after, Microsoft is supposed to release more bumpers with various colors. And of course, those little bumpers are gonna be about $40 a piece. So kind of the Apple-esque move there, in my opinion there, Microsoft. So let's get to the brass tacks of this device. So how is it actually using this device in day-to-day -day usage? So like I mentioned in my day one 24-hour update, this definitely has a learning curve to it. Now, initially out of the box, this is gonna have the gestures enabled. And a lot of reviewers, uh, including myself, 
disabled that and just went with the three button layout. It just seems to make it run smoother. It's more intuitive. The only negative of that is with the three button layout, you're going to lose about, you know, a couple millimeters of your screen size because those virtual buttons are going to pop up. But once you get past that learning curve, this thing really is a joy to use. But honestly, for the most part, after the day one update, this thing has been fairly responsive, fast, fluid. Now, yes, there are some bugs. I'm not going to blow smoke up your butt and say it's a perfect experience. Other reviewers have talked about it as well, but there are definitely some bugs that need to be squashed in this. But overall, though, for me, it's been a fairly smooth experience, a um, fast experience. But like I said, every now and again, those bugs pop up where I'll open it. One of the screens won't come on. I'll just have to close it and open it again, and it comes. But there are quite a few bugs. I'll address a couple of them, but it's not a perfect experience. But to be honest with you, for a first gen, go with this. It's a pretty good experience. But to be honest with you, this device kind of reminds me of an old Palm Pilot of the day, or even like a BlackBerry. Like I said, I like using the single screen mode because it just kind of gives it that wide chunky look. And when you bring up the keyboard, it just feels very much like an old Palm Trio that I used to have or, you know, kind of a Blackberry. So I kind of like it and I like this. I think it's a four by three aspect ratio. I actually really like that instead of the tall, skinny slabs of glass that we're all used to this day and age. And yes, even with this little bit wider uh, form factor, it fits in my pocket just fine. Now with this device, one of my favorite things about it is what Microsoft calls postures. And that's utilizing that hinge and just the various things that you can do with it. You know, just kind of laptop mode, book mode, tent mode. I mean, there's lots of modes. It's just kind of whatever you want to use. My favorite one personally is using kind of this right here. I'll hold it like this. I'll have YouTube on the top or bottom. Then on the bottom, I'll be scrolling a Twitter feed, Facebook, whatever. But I love having a video going while I'm doing other things. So that's one of the things where this thing excels. And you've got quite a bit of room on that upper display for the video. So it's a really pleasant experience. It's a larger video than you would have on a traditional smartphone. And as I mentioned, uh, one of my favorite things about this device is the ability to make it a one screen device from a two screen. Because let's be honest, nobody wants to multitask all the time. Nobody wants to do two things at once all the time. Sometimes you just want to focus on one thing and that's where it's nice to have the ability to, hey, I don't want to use that screen. I'm going to flip it back, do one thing at a time, focus on that one task with no distractions. And it'll also save battery life because you're only powering one screen. So if you start to feel kind of frustrated with this or overwhelmed, like I said, you can flip it back and you've essentially got a traditional phone form factor. Now, again, with using this device, one of the great things is the ability to create app pairs. So when you do want to do two things at once, app pairs simply allows you to select two of any apps that are on your device and it'll just quickly open them when you click on that app pair. And also you can span apps. However, you know, you're going to have this big hinge and depending on if the app is optimized, which at this point, it's only the Microsoft apps, um, the Kindle app and a couple uh, comic book apps I've seen where it'll utilize both screens, the same app. So Outlook obviously works really well. Kindle where it makes it like a little you know, $1,400 e-reader, but it works really well. Now, if you want to span apps such as a, you know, YouTube web page, whatever, you're again, going to have the giant hinge down the middle, which depending on what you're doing, um, it's may or may not be an issue for you. You know, I found that obviously when I'm, if I'm going to try and watch a video like this, it would be extremely distracting. So I won't do that. But if I'm just scrolling, you know, Facebook, Instagram, whatever, if I'm scrolling a feed, and that hinge doesn't bother me because I'm just, you know, kind of ignoring it automatically. And of course, obviously this is a Surface device. So if you have a Surface pen, it will work with this no problem. You don't have to pair it. It just works. Now, none of the buttons work or anything like that because you're not actively paired to it. But if you want to just use it as a inkling, inking stylus, it works well. I'm not going to talk much on that, but it's there if you want to use it. And I also have to say, um, in opposition to a lot of the initial reviews of this, the typing experience has been really good. The Swift key keyboard is not giving me any issues. It seems to be fast, fluid, and you can even customize it. So as you can see on mine, I changed the color to red. I just think it looks kind of cool. It adds some contrast, but you can essentially make it any color you want. But as far as 
you type in usability, it's been great. I mean, I haven't seen any delay, any stutter with that. So it's actually been a joy to type on and uh, it's pretty easy to type on. Now, something else that I haven't seen talked about much is the ability to use the Your Phone app. So if you have a Windows PC, it doesn't have to be a Surface, just a device running Windows 10 and you have this, you can download the Your Phone app and that gives you the ability to either send, receive text messages, get phone calls. Um, you can even mirror the display of your Duo on your Surface device. And in the latest update, depending on um, when Microsoft pushes it out, you'll be able to have the apps feature where you can actually open the apps on your device, or I should say open the apps from your Duo, see them on your PC, and even pin them to your taskbar if you want so you can quickly open them. And the cool thing is when you're using the Your Phone app, um, once you're signed into it, you can have your device closed so you're saving battery. The screens are not on, but you can still access all the functions of your Duo on your PC, which is pretty cool in my opinion. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the giant elephant in the room. You guys all knew it was coming. Every reviewer has talked about it, and that's the camera. I'll throw a couple little samples up, but to be honest with you, um, it's not that good. I mean, there's no sugar coating it. It's just um, mediocre at best. Now, obviously, if you have really good lighting, you're outdoors. I mean, you can get some okay shots from this. I mean, Danny Wingett did a whole video where he shows, you know, you can, with really, really good lighting, get some decent shots. But this is not the camera that you want to take to your kid's birthday party or anything important that you want to take pictures of. Um, it'll also do 4K video at 30 frames per second. Again, it's mediocre, not the greatest. But if the camera is important to you, then this is not your device. Now, some other omissions that I briefly touched on, again, are the lack of wireless charging. And I'm wondering if that wasn't because of how thin this device is, because obviously when you wirelessly charge something, it generates heat. And with such a thin form factor, there may be no way for them to dissipate the heat in this. But I will say uh, the battery management <clears throat> Of this device definitely makes up for not having the wireless charging. Like I mentioned under the specs, this thing's got a 3,577 milliamp battery and battery life has been fantastic. Now I obviously have been using this a lot because I wanted to review it so I've been using the crap out of it and I've never not made it through a full day. The lowest I've got this thing and that's using both displays uh, working this thing pretty hard was about 15% at the end of the day. And that's a full day taking it off the charger about 6 a.m. and not putting it back on till about 10 p.m. So this thing is a battery champ, which is shocking how thin this is, how small the battery is that uh, Microsoft was able to optimize it like they did. So that, in my opinion, is definitely a home run with the device. The battery management is fantastic. When you have this thing closed, I mean, it just sips battery. I mean, it barely uses any battery at all when you have the device closed like this. Now, the other glaring omission with this device is the lack of NFC. Now, that is a little annoying, but at the same time, it's easily overcome if you have a smartwatch. Here, I've got my trusty Samsung Gear S3 Frontier. So this is about a three or four year old smartwatch now. I paired it to this with no problem. And I use my Samsung Pay with this, no issues. Um, and now with this watch, I can actually use a MST, so it's even better. Um, but I've overcome that issue, again, with just having a decent smartwatch. And that smartwatch also obviously allows you to get the notifications from your phone. So if you like to leave this closed um, and you don't want to open it to see your notifications, they'll obviously go to your smartwatch and problem solved there. The other way to get around that is to just carry it around like this because it's glass on both sides anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So you can just leave it in your pocket or on your desk like this and you'll get your notifications, no issue. Now for a few bugs that I've noticed with this device, just come with some of the more annoying ones. Uh, the first is when you take a screenshot. Now obviously if you have it open like a book mode, you take a screenshot, it's gonna capture both screens, which you would kind of expect. But if you go to single screen mode and say you just want to take a screenshot of what's on your single screen, it still automatically captures the second screen as well. So 
anytime you take a screenshot, it's going to have both screens, which is highly annoying. Um, it doesn't even give you the option, like if you take a screenshot, say, on a Samsung device or an iPhone, before it saves that picture to your camera roll, it gives you the little option where if you want to crop it or select a certain region of the screen, and then it saves it. This one, it doesn't do that. You take a screenshot, sends it right to your camera roll, uh, both screens and all. So that's kind of frustrating if you take screenshots on your device. And that particular bug is definitely an easy software fix. So hopefully in the next software update for this thing, uh, Microsoft will fix that. Now another big bug with this device is just the way certain apps display. Sometimes info from the app will be cut off or squashed and you just won't see the entire app. Ironically enough, one of the apps that's been giving me issues is the Microsoft's own news app. Works awesome if you have it spanned across both screens, but if you just open it on the single screen, everything is squashed where you're unable to read it until you, you know, span it to the second screen. And that's Microsoft's own app, but there's other apps that also kind of have trouble adjusting sometimes to whether it's on one screen or two. Now again, I could spend an entire video probably listing the bugs of this device, so Microsoft definitely does have a lot of work to do, but I think the majority of them are minor and can actually be fixed fairly quickly and simply. I mean, I'm, a, I'm not a uh, app designer or anything like that, but um, they seem like they're fairly minor and can actually be fixed with software and not so much, you know, having to do something different with the hardware. The exception, again, being that six gigabytes of RAM, I think this really does need maybe eight gigabytes because there's times where it'll stutter. And I think that is because of the RAM management, not the processor itself. Okay, so finally, let's talk about the price of this thing and should you even really buy it or consider it. So in the United States, this thing currently costs $1,400. Now, obviously here we've got to pay tax. So with tax going out the door, this thing's probably going to cost you about $1,500. But if you go through Microsoft, they do actually have some pretty good trade-ins for this. So depending on what type of phone you have, you can go to the Microsoft website. Um, it'll send you off to another website. You put in your phone info and you can get, you know, up to 400 to 600 bucks off of this thing, depending on what device you're trading in. So that does kind of take the sting off a little bit. So then is this thing worth the asking price of 1400 bucks that Microsoft wants for it? I would have to say in its current state, that's a big new. So, um, 1400, then you throw in your tax, 1500 bucks for this thing. Um, especially with all the bugs, I just, I don't see it. I mean, even with all the bugs squashed, I still think that that's too steep for this device. I mean, I get it. Yes, this is a new form factor, a new device. Uh, Microsoft's pushing boundaries with this. They had a lot of R and D involved. But obviously there's no value when it comes to paying uh, that much for this device. Now, maybe if the cameras were, you know, at least as good as, say, a flagship from two years ago, then maybe I could justify it. But um, in its current state, current form, I just can't see spending that kind of money. I mean, the value is not there. I think you would be better off going with something, you know, like even... An LG, you know, you can get the V60 or the Velvet, which you can get the optional dual screen case with that. So you'll have dual screens when you want it and just a traditional phone when you don't. So, and those are about half the price of this. And in the case of the V60, even more. But with that price, you have to keep in mind that this was not made for your average consumer. I mean, this is made for kind of your tech enthusiasts, your Surface fans, folks who love Surface devices. I mean, I'm one of them. Or this is just made for someone that likes to do a lot of work on their phone as far as productivity. So again, you know, the big selling point, Surface Duo, two screens, you can have two things going at once. So this is a good productivity device, especially if you pair a keyboard to it. You could even pair a mouse to it, you know, and use it as a mini laptop if you wanted. But again, for your average consumer, just looking for a cool phone, I don't think this is it. But if you're watching this video, you're probably interested in it at least a little bit. And again, the good thing with if you buy it through Microsoft on their website, they've got a 60 day return period. So, I mean, you've got plenty of time to play with it. And like a lot of reviewers have said, you're going to know after the first week if this device is for you or not. So for me personally, honestly, I have actually really been enjoying this device. I mean, I kind of get 
Microsoft's vision for this. I get what they're trying to do. I mean, I love having the two screens. I like having the ability to do two things at once. And then I really, again, like the ability to just isolate myself, put that second screen away and use it just like a traditional device when I want to use a single screen. But at the end of the day, me personally, I'm going to actually go ahead and return this device because really at the end of the day, I can't justify this device when it can't replace my current phone. And the only reason it can't replace my current phone is because of the lackluster camera. I mean, I personally, I mean, with my job, I get to go to some kind of neat places where I want to be able to capture that moment with a good camera. And it's obviously the best camera you have is the one that you have on you at the time. So, um, in the case, if I want to capture something cool, I definitely don't want to use this to do it. And unfortunately, I think Microsoft underestimated how important cameras are today in phones. I mean, even if you're the typical business user, Wall Street guy, you're still going to want to take pictures on your phone. So I just, I think Microsoft really underestimated the importance of having a decent phone on this. And again, I think a lot of that had to do with the physical design of this, but I think they could definitely improve for the next iteration and still pretty much maintain the same form factor with this. I mean, you look at the Pixel phones, the lens on that camera is not that big. Even the iPhone SE, I mean, that's an old camera. It's a fairly thin phone. It's a small sensor. I don't see why they couldn't fit it in here and still maintain that form factor. But again, I'm not an engineer, so I guess we'll have to see what they do with the second generation. But I think Microsoft definitely missed the boat when underestimating how important a camera is to the device, especially when you're going to use this as your phone or your only device. I mean, personally, there are people that like to carry two phones, two devices, but that ain't me. I'm not going to carry two devices just so that I can have a good camera. So um, to me, it would be ridiculous to keep this just to have, you know, as a secondary device and still carry a phone around with me just because I want to have that good camera. So I'm not going to do it. So I'm going to wait for hopefully Gen 2 where I can use this as my phone and my only phone. That's when I would definitely jump on this, recommend it and buy it. But until Microsoft uh, fixes the issues with the camera, personally, that ain't going to be me. So there it is. I know there was a lot of rambling in there, but there's a lot to cover with this device, a lot to talk about with this device. And I've really enjoyed my time with it. Like I said, I think it's a fun device. It's definitely a unique form factor and concept, and it's definitely a, a one of a kind in my opinion. But at the end of the day, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and return this thing. But if you do have any questions on this, um, I'll do my best to answer it. So again, put it in the comments below. I do read all the comments. Now, whether I have time to respond to them or not is another story, but I'll try my best. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and it helped you out, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have not subscribed, I'd appreciate it if you do so. Thanks.